This reaction is brought to you by my $5 or more patrons at patreon.com slash alexheights. I'd like to thank Identitech, TFG, Will E, Steve Aldersley, Kurt David, Jason Bates, at Video 69 on Twitter, Mason Frost, Matthew McLaughlin, Andreas Glazel, Biff C, Ray Schuster, and B. Jabber for sponsoring this video, supporting me, my family, the channel. We appreciate it highly, and I hope you all enjoy the video. We're here. We have arrived at the next Sonic Youth album. So I've uh, done Bad Moon Rising, obviously, because uh, we're doing the next album after that. Um, I haven't recorded the... I'll probably do it tomorrow. Uh, I need to record a couple follow-ups. haven't recorded the follow-up to Bad Moon Rising yet. Um, I think it's okay. Um, no surprise. Uh, you could go look on my Rate Your Music for the ratings that I've done. Uh, but not to spoil the follow-up, I'll say I gave it a 3 out of 5. I think it's better than mediocre. Um, it just it it seems like I said very rocky footing. Um, I like what they were aiming for. I didn't think I don't think they fully stuck the landing, um, but I can see why people would really like the album. It just didn't strike me in that way. I'm one of those people who feel like it's in the the middle camp. I'm not I'm not in the the great camp. I'm in the middle camp, and I, I understand why people would be in the great camp, but. I'll explain more in the follow-up. Uh, so, yes, we are going to be moving on to the next one now. For those who don't know, I do unedited reactions on my Patreon, patreon.com slash alexheights. Um, for $10 a month, you can get access to unedited reactions from Modest Mouse going forward. And uh, I believe that's going to be, including this one, 23 reactions. So uh, if you want to watch some unedited reactions, uh, $10 a month, you could even just hop in for a month, watch as much as you want, and then hop out. I'm fine with that, whatever you want to do. Or a dollar a month uh, just supports the channel. Greatly appreciate it. Gets you access to polls that we do every two to four-ish albums just to kind of break up the monotony of going through a full artist and it gives me chances to do like one-off kind of you know specialty albums so um if that interests you uh would be greatly appreciated if not just keep watching anyway evil sonic youth <coughs> i apologize i'm sick i might be coughing a little bit just got a little bit of chest stuff 1986 this is one year after bad moon rising um 36 minutes, we're going to be including one bonus track, Bubblegum, which is just an extra 2 minutes, 50 seconds, so this will be a short one. Uh, Alt-rock, post-punk, experimental rock, noise rock, new wave is here again. Um, I don't quite know how this will shape up to Bad Moon Rising. People say that this is like a great step forward, and it kind of points towards um, their two next albums as being like really great and obviously daydream nation is considered their pinnacle um and we got 10 tracks here um i don't really have a whole lot to say um because i mean you know wait for the follow-up for bad moon rising obviously but um i think we're just gonna hop right on in um with the first track tom violence I can already tell a difference. Um, it's a lot. The thing with Bad Moon Rising, I mean, granted, this reaction will probably come out after the follow up. So you'll probably have seen the follow up and then this. So I, I guess it's fine if I kind of talk about it this way. Um, the thing with Bad Moon Rising was it felt like it was trying to be something of a concept album. But it didn't quite coalesce into much. Um, but people can, you know, debate me on that, and I might be completely wrong in a way. 
it, it's all about like you know subjective how it comes through right I, I didn't feel like it came through very strongly there this feels a lot cleaner um i think I, I i said in the reaction like there's a difference between tight and loose um this feels tighter this is uh much more focused and direct um and there's an there's an ounce of like i definitely feel the post-punk in here there's an ounce of gothic rock as well um not really overt but it, it there's a hint and um yeah this is going down a lot easier already than most other things off of uh, Bad Moon Rising. So uh, I'm on board. I'm on board. Let's keep going. Shadow of a Doubt. Much better soundscape work here, too. Um, this is like... The prepared guitar stuff, if this, I, I can kind of sense it in there if it's in there, but um, already like light years better than Bad Moon Rising, I feel. Um, I, dare I say objectively, but personally, I'm enjoying this way more because it it has a much more like cinematic focus to it as well. There's a, it almost feels like a, a soundtrack or like a, Kind of like how some post-rock albums feel like they're describing a, a movie or something, you know? Kind of like soundtracks for the blind, if you will. Um, yeah, this, this, is, this is good so far. Fantastic. I like it. Um, the, like I said, more focused. The lead up into that more like atonal no wave climax was very warranted. It was a, it was a flavor. It wasn't like the crux of the song. And I, I feel like this has much more musicality to it. Whereas Bad Moon Rising felt more just like coming off of the heels of, you know, the more transgressive um, music movements, the death rock stuff, the, the some of the punk ethos, post-punk ethos. Granted, that's still here, but it doesn't feel like that's like the kind of... It, Bad Moon Rising felt a little too try-hard almost in that sense. Whereas this feels more m mature, um, more intentional, and masterful, I suppose you could say. But I'm, I'm digging this so far. Um, really, I mean, like, I was, I wouldn't say worried, but like, Bad Moon Rising isn't a perfect snapshot of like this kind of stuff. And like, I like I said, Cool Thing is one of the only other uh, Sonic Youth songs I've heard. But I knew that, like, hearing Cool Thing and then hearing Bad Moon Rising, I'm like, okay, they're not going to stay in the Bad Moon Rising phase, um, which is not my preferred Sonic Youth sound, uh, especially not after hearing these two tracks. And uh, so now I'm just even more excited to get into these fantastic albums. So let's keep going. Star Power. I believe this was a single. Uh, yes. Let's go.
This album is more, or I should say this band, is more melodic than I was expecting, actually. Um, although, like, I know they're kind of moving out of No Wave a little bit to some po point or degree. Uh, and this is more of a single, <coughs> marketed as a single. And I actually liked Shadow of a Doubt more than Star Power, but Star Power was fine. It's it's refreshing to have like no wave be a spice and not like a primary thing. Like it is somewhat atonal, but there is like like I said, there's a musicality, there's a through line you can follow. It's not just pure unadulterated no wave madness, which I don't fully vibe with. It's impressive when I hear it. Like every time I just listen to a little bit of the Ascension by Glenn Blanca, I'm like, okay. I don't really want to listen to anymore. <laughs> I've had my fill. But this is a, 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 it works really well as like a spice to, to some music. Uh, okay, well, I, we're three for three so far. I'm liking all of this. In the Kingdom, number 19. <laughs> Ronaldo is also unwilling to die. Suddenly all is quite Ronaldo's been listening to too much white light, white heat. Not bad. Um, I understand that it's like vocals and lyrics by, you know, not Thurston or Kim, but um, very Velvet Underground, obviously. White Light, White Heat reminds me a lot of most of that album, honestly. Uh, it was fine. The first kind of like lull, I would say, after three really solid tracks, but it's not bad. It's just slightly a step down, I would say. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. Green light. A little bit more of like a functional song, I would say. Um, it was fine. It uh, probably like a little bit better than In the Kingdom, but like not as good as the first three, I would say. Uh, maybe on par with Tom Violence, where it, it kind of like Tom Violence and Greenlight feel like an intro and an outro to the side of a vinyl. So like it, it served its purpose, but as a song, it was just kind of there, I suppose. Uh, definitely Shadow of a Doubt is my favorite so far. That was uh, a phenomenal one. So let's flip the vinyl. And we are now on Death to Our Friends. There it is. Nice little instrumental, atonal kind of track to start off side B. Uh, again, like Green Light, it feels like a functional track rather than like something that stands on its own. Um, but so far, this has just been a really nice, tight.
tight album experience. Um, not really much in the way of duds at all. So let's keep trucking. Uh, usually I, I've noticed this trend of like second to last or third to last tracks are some of the weakest on a lot of albums from a lot of different artists. I don't know why. Um, kind of like penultimate track blues. And so Secret Girl and Marilyn Moore, I'm like, one of these might be not good. I don't know. Let's see what we got with Secret Girl. Fantastic. Good. I I like the like lead into this like weird haunted broken music box lullaby sound. Um my fears were put aside that this might be a bad track. However, we're not out of the out of the woods yet, as Taylor Swift might say. Marilyn Moore. Uh, we got lyrics by Lydia Lunch, but no no contribution other than that. So uh, let's see what this one's all about. Hey. Hey. Uh, that one was fine, probably on the level of like maybe Greenlight or Tom Violence, not a favorite. So far, I'd say Shadow of a Doubt and Secret Girl are my are my two big picks. But we have two tracks left, well, one official one and then a bonus. So let's uh, continue with Expressway to Your Skull. This apparently had other names, Madonna, Sean, and Me, and then also The Crucifixion of Sean Penn. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what we got. It's seven minutes. Sorry, I don't usually pause during songs, but I know I'll forget it if I wait till the end. I like the descending, I assume it's the bass, or just straight up guitar, sounds like bass. Um, the descending notes, but anchoring on that, uh, like, what would you call it, uh, tonic note. Um, and like, you always go back to that one and you're walking the other one down closer and closer. Uh, it's a nice touch.
Still got 10 seconds left. Anything else? Anything you want to share with the class? No. Okay, there it is. Uh, great. I, I love the the build up and then like the very slow letdown. Like it didn't get insane, but uh, it did have like a very prolonged letdown that just became very soundscapey. Very good. Very good. Um, okay, I'll save my thoughts until I listen to the bonus track, even though I pretty much could do it now. But let's go with Bubblegum. Well, I've never heard the original by Kim Fowley, but uh, that was a fine little, just like, kind of bunk track, I guess. It's a, a uh, nothing, nothing like anything else on the album, really. So uh, it's just there. Anyway, Evol, it is great. It is way better than Bad Moon Rising, in my opinion. Um. I already kind of feel like how I would rate it, but I'll save that for like a follow-up as I listen to it on future listens. Shadow of a Doubt, Secret Girl, fantastic tracks. Expressway to Your Skull is really solid as well. The only ones I thought were maybe slightly weak were In the Kingdom and Marilyn Moore. Everything else served a purpose, uh, did something really interesting and solid. Shadow of a Doubt's probably my favorite track on here. That was that was really cool. Um, yeah, very nice. I much more enjoyable than I was expecting. I was, I mean, with Bad Moon Rising, I was thinking like, oh, is this just gonna like have like that punk ethos that's just like super, but super transgressive and darker and just like edgy. Um, but no, there's there's a lot of musicality here. There's a lot of the composition is way better on these tracks as well. Um, the soundscape work is cool on a few of these tracks. It's it's nice. It's very nice. Um, eager to listen through these again as I edit. I'll probably not listen to them on my own time, but as I edit, I uh, you know re-listen and kind of finalize and form opinions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Uh, just makes me even more eager to get to their uh, next stuff coming up. Okay. That's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Things to plug yet again, my Patreon, of course. Patreon.com slash Alex Heights. Dollar a month supports the channel. Gets you access to polls. Ten dollars a month gets you access to unedited reactions, of which this is one of them. Uh, and then also the Discord. Link in the description for that. Got a lot of people over there. About 150-ish. Uh, music discussion, recommendations, topster charts, memes, controversial topics, all that stuff, and we have a lot of people over there who love Sonic Youth, so if you love Sonic Youth and want to join the Discord, you will fit right on in. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Greatly appreciated. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, a comment, a thing. You know all the stuff you're supposed to do that I'm supposed to remind you to do. Uh, did you know that 500% of my audience isn't subscribed? Oh no, please hit subscribe. It helps. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, eager to get to Sister next week. Although, actually, are we going to have a poll album next? Let me look. Yes, poll album is next. I did not realize that. Okay, and then Sister. Uh, this might be a poll album chosen by my Discord people uh, who choose four albums, um, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to contribute to that, head on over to the Discord and we'll, we'll pick some albums. Uh, but yeah. Thank you all so much for watching again. I hope you're all doing well. I'm saying the same things over and over and over. I'm going to leave. Until next time, everyone. Godspeed. <laughs>